Welcome to the Dr. Nurse Paul Show, hosted by Aspire RN and Dr. Paul. You are watching The Secrets of Next Generation NCLEX. Dr. Nurse Paul is an NCLEX expert, having trained and mentored thousands of international nurses past the NCLEX RN for over a decade. He graduated with a doctor of nursing practice in Texas Christian University. He is a registered nurse, an advanced practice registered nurse, and a certified family nurse practitioner. He also has completed a certificate for nurse educator postgraduate course. Aside from teaching, he has extensive clinical experience in emergency and family medicine. He has over 15 years of combined clinical and academic healthcare experience. Dr. Nurse Paul is an immigrant from the Philippines. He is currently based in Houston, Texas, where he operates his business, Dr. Nurse Paul and Aspire RN NCLEX Prep. He loves to share his life story of how he overcame his challenges to reach his dreams. He is passionate in helping nurses realize the American dream. So without further ado, let's all welcome Dr. Nurse Paul. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Dr. Nurse Paul Show. All right. If you guys can hear me, um, say something in the comment section. I'm streaming live over here in Houston, Texas. Let me just fix my camera real quick. And uh, it's a very gloomy, gloomy day. There's going to be severe thunderstorms today. How is everyone doing? Welcome, Charles. Charles is watching from Uganda. Thank you for watching. He's in YouTube right now. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to be doing a case study today. And uh, we're going to be talking about the scoring system. Um, hold on. Uh, my camera is having issues with refocusing. All right, my other camera stopped working. So this is my backup camera. Let me fix that real quick. All right, there you go. Uh, it's a little tilted, but that should do for now. All right, okay, again, welcome everybody to the Dr. Nurse Paul Show. Today, we are going to talk about the secrets of next generation NCLEX, partial scoring system. So this was the show that I missed back in April uh, 15 and I'm making up for it. Um, I was sick back then. I was in Seattle and I got really sick and I couldn't I couldn't um, do the show because I, I thought I would look um, very sickly in the show. But thank you. Charlene is watching us from the Philippines and Sharon watching us from UAE. One second. Um, uh, and, um, still setting up my screen right here and Lay Ross is also watching us today. Charlie's coming from Jack's Florida. Welcome. And, um, Diane is watching us from Bahal Philippines. Thank you, Diane. Michael is also watching us from the Philippines. Thank you, Dennis from, uh, UAE and uh, Christian is watching us from Ghana. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys can please share this show and tag your friends. And we're going to start in a few minutes. All right. While waiting for more viewers to come in. Um, um, how is everyone doing? Oh, my God. That's my alarm. <laughs> So embarrassing. Let me stop that real quick. I thought I already turned it off. Uh, I'll probably snooze it. But how is everyone doing? Anyone's going to be taking the NCLEX very soon. Um, we have great success in Aspire RN in the last um, month. I mean, April, um, this month of April, all of our students who took the next gen NCLEX have passed the NCLEX. All right. So please follow Aspire RN page as well. Let me just fix this camera real quick. All right. Uh huh. All right. I'll fix the situation real quick because I don't like how tilted this camera is. And I thought I'd fixed it last night, but it looks like it wasn't fixed properly. There we go. Okay. So again, we have such great success for next generation NCLEX. 
Our students have all passed the NCLEX and we are very happy about it. Please do give Aspire RN a like or follow right now so you can tune in. We will be posting the names and the testimony, there's testimonials and video testimonials of those who passed with the next gen NCLEX. And I'm very happy about it. When my students pass the NCLEX, I feel like I've also passed the NCLEX. Just like how I felt when I took the NCLEX uh, a little over 16 years ago, not so long ago, huh? But anyway, um, so we've got great feedbacks from next gen takers, next gen NCLEX takers, plenty of case studies, plenty of next gen types of questions, but there are still a lot of questions from the old format. So um, pretty much um, not, not major adjustment to where the whole test bank was changed to the next gen format where you see situations and case studies um, or trends, questions, and bow ties. Right? So that's the feedback that we've gotten so far. And students are more comfortable to have taken the next gen. I had students that have fail, failed the old generation NCLEX and they felt they were more confident and competent enough to pass the NCLEX. And so they did. And uh, we're celebrating in Aspire RN. I needed coffee, guys. I'm sorry. Anyway, aside from the fact that we have so much passers for next gen NCLEX, in my past few shows, we've talked about retrogression, where um, we're running out of visas for nurses to come here to the US. But, guys, that's only temporary. Every October 1, the fiscal year for the next year starts. So 2024 fiscal year for um, immigration services begin October 1, which means there's going to be fresh sets of visas because there's annual numerical limit, which means the retrogression might not be as bad as we think. Knock on the wood because I really don't have any data to prove that. That's an opinion from my end, having seen multiple retrogressions over my career. But guys, if you are this nurse that is scared about, you know, what's going to happen with my American dream that now we're running out of visas and they're not giving out visas, guys, that's only temporary. All right. It took me almost 10 years all right, to wait to get here to the U.S. I've already been petitioned since I was 21. I didn't get here till I was 30. All right. So that's almost 10 years that I waited. But. The rest is history. I'm over here enjoying the American dream. American dream is real. And uh, reaping the benefits of being patient and being goal-oriented. All right. So despite the retrogression, please continue taking your NCLEX. Please continue working with your recruiters. If you don't have a recruiter, please let me know. Send me a message in my Facebook page right now, and we can help you find a recruiter. We have a lot of recruiters in our network. All right. Anyway, this, um, um, since we're still waiting for more viewers, please share this show to everybody. All right. Hold on. I, I thought I forgot to share this in my own page. Um, but guys, um, since we are already talking about retrogressions and all that, you know, the retrogression is just a retrogression, but we still have a lot of jobs. Let me just share this right now. Uh, one second. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I forgot to share it. I went live without um, sharing it to Lefora, which is the page that I'm, um, that I'm an admin of. I'm one of the admins. But um, since we're talking about retrogression and jobs, there's plenty of jobs here in the U.S., all right? And Nurses Month is coming right up, all right? May 1. Uh, the month of May is considered the International Nurses Month because it's the birthday of the mother of nursing, Miss Florence Nightingale, all right? And the kickoff actually starts May 6th internationally, and the actual International Nurses Day is on May 12th, okay? So that's May 12th. But, but... In Dr. Nurse Paul Show, we're going to start early. We're going to have a kickoff on May 3. Every Wednesdays on top of my Saturday shows. Um, if my moderators can show this poster, 
every Wednesdays, we're going to do a virtual job fair. All right. So I'm sorry about that. Um, virtual job fair. Okay. So um, let me uh, change the format of the screen because my face is too tiny. I don't know how that happened. There you go. Um, it's probably an editing error. Okay. But there will be a virtual job fair that we will be doing. All right. And um, that's going to be all Wednesdays of um, of um, May. So that's May 3, May 10, May 17, May 24, May 31. You have the QR code right in front of you. Scan now to register so you can receive notifications. But we will be inviting um, recruiters and employers to talk about their open jobs, their scholarships or sponsorship processes, the benefits of joining them, and how we can get a job from them. So scan that QR code right now or visit my page for more information. We have the link there to the forms that you will fill out so we can um, um, get you on board to our mailing list. And we want to thank our sponsors ahead of time for joining us in this um, event. And uh, we're going to have a lot of prices that will already start on May 3, which is this coming Wednesday, guys. So please, please, please tune in. Okay. So that's going to be the virtual job fair. It's going to be Wednesdays, 8 a.m. Central U.S. time, just like right now. And we're going to kick off the Nurses Month early. And that's going to be May 3. I'm going to be way ahead of everybody kicking off the Nurses Month. Um, but um, that's it. I already have a lot of um, inquiries and interested people to join the virtual job fair. We want to we wanna um, find a job for you, the, the job that fits you. So please join me. This is going to be every Wednesday of May, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, right here in YouTube and in Facebook, all right? Have you guys registered already? Has anyone registered already? We're going to find you an employer and sponsors and uh, um, scholarships. We're going to talk about that when we um, do your virtual job fair, okay? So so, so the company representatives are going to be talking about their job offers. Has anyone already registered for this? We have a lot of viewers coming in right now. Thank you. All right. And um, so that's the QR code. And then on top of that, I will still have a uh, show. I will still have a show on uh, Saturdays. Let me see that. Um, let me just respond real quick. All right. And we still have shows on Saturdays. I'm not sure if I have the poster for that. Um, but we still have shows for Saturdays. Um, it's going to be every um, Saturday again, 8 a.m. Central, uh, Central U.S. time. So I'm not sure if I have that poster, but please follow me on my page. We have shows every Saturday still. So this coming month of May, we're going hard on the Nurses Month. I have a lot of surprises, guys. I have a lot of um, free NCLEX subscriptions to give out. Free UWorld subscriptions. I also have a lot of other prizes. We're going to give out IELTS review courses for you guys. We're also going to give out vouchers and discount coupons. And also, we're going to have the recruiters talk to you about the jobs that they have so they can start petitioning you so you can live the American dream. Like I said, even if it's retrogression, we're going to keep doing what we need to do. We're going to keep pushing we're going to keep finishing these NCLEX exams and English exams and whatever documents that would be needed to get you here to the U.S. So who's joining? Who's joining the virtual job fair and the Dr. Nurse Paul show? It's going to be... Um, um, hold on. Uh, one second. All right. So just responding to my moderators in the background. Thank you. Um, but anyway, um, who's joining us today? Who's joining us on the virtual job fair? Who's joining us in the Dr. Nurse Paul shows? I have a lot of shows um, that will be happening on the month of May. The virtual job fair is Wednesdays. Every Saturdays, I would still have your Dr. Nurse Paul show. 
And I will be inviting different nurses to give us a perspective about living a life as a nurse here in the U.S. We're going to talk about the American dream. We're going to talk about financial independence. We're going to talk about um, so many Nurses Month related things. So it's all about nurses. We're going to focus on nurses for the month of May. We're going to focus on their lived experiences as nurses here in the United States. So that's going to be the highlight of my Saturday shows. Um, on the kickoff of Nurses Month internationally, May 6th, I will be collaborating with um, the Filipino nurse influencers or nurse vloggers in Facebook and YouTube. And we also have special guests. And uh, we're going to be streaming this live to 16 different Facebook pages on May 6th. And I was invited as a resource speaker. And I'm also going to give out free NCLEX subscription to viewers on that day. So please follow me. There's a lot of stuff that I've prepared for the month of May. All right. So many shows. And there's also a Siena launch. If you guys are not aware, I've been elected as a board of director for um, the Siena Nursing Society. It's a society for internationally educated nurses, just like you and me. And we are here. We've built this organization to support IENs and represent IENs to issues and talks concerning our welfare. We do not have currently an organization that represents IENs prior to Siena. But now we have Siena, which is good because it's in line with my advocacies. So please join us in Siena launch. This is going to be on May 12. It's also going to be live streamed in Facebook and LinkedIn. And I'm probably going to stream it. I'm going to stream it um, uh, for sure here in my page as well. But please join us. So many shows that I'm going to be doing. It's a total of 12 shows, I think, that I'll be doing this month of May alone, 12 or 13. So please look for me. Stay tuned in my page because whatever shows I do, I'm going to stream on my page so you can follow me. But I'm going to be devoting a lot of my time for nurses this month. All right. So who's ready for the next generation NCLEX topic for today? We're going to talk about your next gen NCLEX and what's changing. All right. So let me see if I can fix this thing real quick. There you go. All right, and later we're gonna we're gonna zoom in the PowerPoint as we go through your case study. Okay, and uh, thank you to those who registered already. Okay, so we have a lot of viewers now. Where are you guys coming from? We have Dennis from UAE, and uh, Ampoma is from Ghana. Thank you for joining. I needed my coffee and needed a little pause. And please keep sharing this. We're going to talk about Next Gen FX. Again, if you join my shows every Wednesdays and Saturdays beginning next week, right, the Nurses Month, I'll be giving out free NCLEX subscription. So if you're already my student, that's good. You don't need another NCLEX subscription. But for you guys that are not yet my student or have friends that are not yet my student, guys, please have them join my show every Wednesdays and Saturdays beginning next week on May 3. I'm going to be giving out free NCLEX reviews. And I'm not only going to give out one. I'm going to give out multiple NCLEX reviews subscription for my program all throughout the month of May. So please, please follow me. And tell your friends about it. Tag them on the posters that we're posting. After this show, we're going to post um, the calendar of events of the Dr. Nurse Paul Show. Both the virtual job fairs on May and the calendar of events for Saturday. So we're going to flash that again towards the end. All right. So for next gen NCLEX, guys, let's let's do it. Faudi, by the way, is joining from Australia. Maravik is in Saudi Arabia. And uh, Fred is in Philippines. Thank you. We have a Facebook user from Saudi Arabia. Thank you guys for joining. Now let's talk about your um, point system. All right. So why do we have to talk about the point or scoring system? This is important because you need to know how the next gen NCLEX works. And part of it is not only changing the delivery system of questions, but also the point um, system. So we have what we call zero over one rule, which is basic and straightforward you get a point for correct answer. 
All right? It's partial scoring, by the way. And plus minus rule, the one that I, it's not really my favorite for my students is right minus wrong answers. But again, with right preparation for NCLEX, the right minus wrong answers should not intimidate you. But of course, if you are not prepared, then you can get a lot of deductions by, you know, answering incorrect items. And the last one is rational rule or paired scoring. All right, you get a point for paired answers. So for next gen NCLEX, guys, point per correct answers. There are seven types of questions that do point per correct. This is very straightforward. You get a point per correct response and you get zero point for incorrect response. All right. You get a point for correct response and you get zero point for incorrect response. All right. And because it's partial scoring system, guys, because it's partial scoring system, there could be a question with five options and three correct answers and you've only provided two, you get two points instead of zero, right? So for me, it's beneficial for students to get partial scores than zero over one. Because uh, before we have what we call all or nothing scoring system. All or nothing means there could be five answers in your screen, but it's only considered one point. You have to get all of them correctly, right? So that gives you 50% chance of getting the correct answer versus in a partial scoring system, you get more chances of getting higher score, all right? So to be honest, partial scoring system will actually work to your favor. But then again, you have to still be prepared. I just had a student that passed yesterday. He was one of my winners from the Dr. Nurse Paul Show. If Wonderbird is here, Albert. He was my winner back in October when I started the Secrets of Next Generation NCLEX. Fast forward six months later, he's already a USRN. He passed his Next Generation NCLEX. And one thing that I remember him saying, I still have to talk to this guy. There's so many passers over the week and I couldn't get to all of them. And he said, you were right when you said master the concepts. That's all it's needed, right? So yes, while it is important to practice with question banks and all that, and I've seen a lot of students who went straight for question bank, without good foundation of your nursing concepts, the question banks are just that, question banks. All right, so that's what we do in Aspire RN. We help you guys build your concepts, all right? We got the longest review programs for IENs, and I did it on purpose that way. I developed the curriculum that way to make sure that I have high pass rates, all right? At the end of the day, it's not about money for me. It's about you guys. It's about helping nurses pass the NCLEX, all right? I even told my students, if they're not satisfied, I'm going to return your money right now. But for me, what's important is my students pass the NCLEX. And I, we provide them, you know, a lot of support for our nurses so they can pass the NCLEX. We want to make sure that they pass the NCLEX. So concept mastery is very important. That's why... Part of my program, the first phase is all about concept mastery. You're going to attend lectures and discussions, interactive classes to master those concepts. And then you move on to the question bags after that, right? So progressive learning. It's also personalized and transformational. That's what we do in Aspire RN, all right? So that's point per correct. There are seven question types. The most familiar that you guys have seen is multiple choice. All right, so multiple choice is a question with four options and you only pick one. That's pretty straightforward. You get one point if you're correct, zero if it's incorrect. And then you get your matrix, multiple choice. When you, when you hear me say matrix, it's called matrix or grid. Other name is table. You see a table, that's called a matrix, all right? And then this, this multiple response select and think of SATA. All right, but here it will tell you how many correct answers you have to choose. For example, instead of saying select all and apply, it will say select three complications from whatever condition. All right, or select four assessment findings that the nurse would require follow up. All right, so it will tell you how many correct answers. For me, this is an easier version or toned down version of SATA. And then you have your close end table, drop down table. Close is you have a word selection box. You can click the box and the box will populate with options, all right? I've shown this in some of my case studies in the past. I think I have one example of that today. And Bowtie, Bowtie is also one of the new test formats for the next NCLEX where you see a Bowtie with five boxes. I've also featured that, all right? 
Thank you for those who just joined. Please share this show to your pages right now so we can reach out to more nurses. Right minus wrong. Hang on, hang in there, guys, because we're going to have a case study in a little bit. I'm just showing you guys what type of questions are we seeing in the next gen and plex. All right, right minus wrong. So this is one of the things you guys need to worry about because if your foundation is not good, you might get deductions for incorrect answers. All right, so I tell my students to be um, not to overanalyze the situation, but also not to underanalyze. You have to find a perfect balance where you actually know what's being asked because if you go way more than that, then you might get deductions. But if you don't think well as well, you're not going to get points as well. So it's finding the perfect balance. For example, there could be a situation that only asks your priority things to follow up, right? So there could be 10 abnormal findings in just one case study. But when it says priority follow-up, it means not all of them need to be included in your answers, right? You probably have to pick three or four or five. It's not going to tell you. But overanalyzing things and clicking things that might be an incorrect item can cost you points, all right? So it might end you up with zero points instead of three points or four points or five points. Be very careful. On the other hand, Another extreme scenario is where a student is not prepared for the case and you also don't get, you, you know, to, to choose um, the correct answer. So you're still going to um, get a deduction. So what I'm saying is find the perfect balance. Knowledge about the case or situation that's being talked about is important. It's integral to pass the NCLEX. Like I said, mastery of concept is important. Memorization, while it applies for certain scenarios like some of your labs, right? Some of your normal values. It really doesn't apply to the whole NCLEX. Remember, I'm not sure if I talked about this as an educator. Educators are aware of the Bloom's taxonomy when we create evaluative tests or exams, right? Um, there's six levels of Bloom's taxonomy. I wish I had a slide right now. The first one would be um, knowledge, testing your knowledge. The second one would be testing your comprehension, all right? The third talks about application of knowledge. Fourth is about analysis. Five is about evaluation or evaluating your knowledge. And six is about creating new information. In NCLEX, think about those six levels, right? I call it level one to six. Your memorization only addresses level one and two. For example, what's the middle layer of the heart, right? We know it's myocardium, right? So for example, um, what do you call the three parts of the small intestines, right? So we know it's du duodenum, it's jejunum, and ileum, correct? Those are comprehension and knowledge-based questions. It's, it's, it's just trying to um, uh, trigger you to recall what you know, all right? Those are what I call low-level questions. So while mnemonics help, and I use mnemonics a lot, while memory cues help, right? Like uh, visual memory cues or words memory cues, or uh, whatever memory strategies that you guys are using or your instructors are using, while they help, they only help with retention or recall, low-level questions, all right? A lot of students have good recall, level one and level two learning, but when they have questions that are about application or analysis, which of the following would the nurse prioritize for a patient with sepsis? It becomes hard for them. Which of the following would require Follow up for a patient that's about to be discharged and was newly diagnosed with diabetes mellitus, right? So that's an analysis type of question. Those level three, four questions are the majority of your NCLEX, all right? And we want to be at that level when, when answering questions. Remember, it's computer adaptive. Every, every time you get an incorrect answer, the question becomes easier, right? So what I'm saying is, while memory cues are important, while memorization is okay, you will not need a lot of memorization for the NCLEX. What you need is understanding and building concepts. So when I lecture, right, when I lecture to my students, I present a case and I connect some concepts that might be related to that, right? We call it concept mapping, where now you're able to connect different concepts. When I talk about lisinopril, we also talk about 
antihypertensives, but we also talk about hypotension symptoms. You know what I mean? But we also talk about adverse effect of lisinopril, which is dry cough, which means the nurse should stop giving the medication. You know what I mean? This is called concept mapping. A student who's able to connect all of those can pass the NCLEX because that's analysis, application, and evaluation of learning. All right? So that's it. Very important that you guys connect your concepts, all right, very carefully. And there are different types of right minus wrong, all right? Your favorite, select all that apply. Everybody's favorite is going to be right minus wrong now. And then highlighting text and tables. And then the matrix multiple response is what I call SATA on steroids, which means it's a SATA made even harder, all right? I think I have, a, uh, I have an example of that in a bit. Multiple response grouping as well, all right? And uh, I have a question from Charles, all right? Let, let me flash that question real quick. Um, excuse me, sir, is there wrong minus, right minus wrong rule applicable to all question types in, of engine? Or it's only for SATA types of question. I think Charles have just answered this right now, right? It's only going to be on these five types of questions, all right? Only for these five types of questions, all right? So anyway, very, very important, guys, that you um, have understanding of the concepts to be able to um, pass the NCLEX, especially with these types of questions. Somebody asked me, uh, I'm having a hard time with, with SATA. How do I improve my SATA scores? You know, there's really not a trick to improve SATA scores, but to improve your mastery of concepts, all right? But, you know, we're, you're, we're not expecting you to get all the SATAs correctly. That's why now we have partial scoring. Because if the SAT has five items and you only got three, at least you get three points instead of zero, okay? So which is actually pretty fair considering that SATA question is actually very hard, all right? So I'll take that, um, what's this? Partial scoring for SATA anytime. So anyway, for the question of um, Charles, and thank you for tuning in in YouTube, Yes, we have five types only that will require right minus wrong questions, all right, or scoring system. And the last scoring system is called the paired scoring system or rational scoring, all right? So this comes in pairs. It's like cost and effect. It's like completing a sentence, but you have word options either from a drag, drag and drop box, word boxes, or a close where you click a link or a uh, button, the arrow button, and it shows you the options, which is pretty good. It helps you because you have word options there, right? But of course, this is a cause and effect question where you read the situation. It's probably asking you the first box could probably be asking you about diagnosis and the second box is going to be asking you about your priority management. For example, based on the situation, the patient is experiencing blank and you choose from the word box or from the close button. And you can answer, say, for example, stroke based on the assessment finding blank. And for example, we say neurologic assessment, all right? So that's paired scoring. You get those pair correctly, that pair correctly, you get one point. If any of those pair is incorrect, then you get zero point. And sometimes you get triad where there's three correct responses or three boxes. If you get one of them incorrectly from box B and C, you get two points. Uh, I mean, if you get them all, you get two points. And if there's one box incorrect, you get uh, one point, all right? And I talked about this in depth in other shows, all right? But that's rational scoring. All right. Um, hi, Kanyara. She said, I'm your student from Bangkok. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you for trusting Aspire RN, all right? We have Sharjah from UAE. Thank you for joining. How many people are here? There's plenty of watchers today. Where are you guys coming from? Thank you. Marjo and is joining from the Philippines. Thank you. All right, guys, please tune in Dr. Nurse Paul uh, Facebook page. We're going to post a um, calendar of events this month. I mean, coming month of May. I'm so excited. It's my first nurses month in the Dr. Nurse Paul show. All right. And I'm going to be giving out a lot, a lot of free NCLEX subscription. So please tune in. It's going to be twice a week now, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Every show that I do under Dr. Nurse Paul, there's going to be winners. Not only a winner, winners. All right. So please tune in. There's going to be mechanics, but you have to be live. All right. You have to be in the show. If you're not in the show, you forfeit your prize. All right. 
So Tarn Ten is coming from Abu Dhabi. Thank you, Christine is joining us from Toronto. All right, oh, that's good. The next step, Christine, is to take FX RN so you can be an RN, okay? And uh, Desiree said, I'm a proud Aspire student here. Proud Aspire student. And uh, had the best cardio lecture yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderbird is here. I was just talking about you earlier, Albert. All right. Master your concepts. Wonderbird or Albert has won our um, Dr. Nurse Paul show live event back in October. Is that correct, Albert? He was one of my first winners when I started the Dr. Nurse Paul show just last year on my birthday month, October. All right. And now look at it. Time flies when you're having fun. He's now a um, registered nurse here in the U.S. Congratulations, um, Albert. And I was just talking about you earlier. And thank you. I'll never forget your words. Dr. Paul, master your concepts. Thank you. That's the only trick, guys. And we're here to help you with that in Aspire RN. Okay? That's the main goal. For you to master your concepts, that's why answering questions will be easier for you. All right? Now let's continue. And let's see this case study, all right? Um, let's see this case scenario right here. You guys can see it clearly. This is from the NCSBN, all right? This is going to be a plus minus scoring, all right? Let's read this. Um, it's going to be the same case the whole time. It's a case study. Bong is joining us from Texas. Thank you, Bong. All right, let's read this carefully, guys. So um, the nurse is in the emergency department, is caring for a 41-year-old male client. Click to highlight the findings below that would require follow-up. If you remember, highlighting text is a right minus wrong question, all right? So in the emergency department, the client reports nausea, loss of appetite, vomiting, fever, constipation for the past two weekends, and abdominal pain, 7 over 10, right? Client states the abdominal pain started after my 7-year-old child accidentally kicked me in the stomach. Client plays soccer with a child once a week. Vital signs 103.4. That's fever, 39.7. Pulse 92, RR 22, blood pressure 130 over 86. Pulse 98% on room air. No significant past medical history. Body mass index is 32. Drinks alcohol only during social occasions. All right. Smoking cigarettes during social occasions. Now, what we're going to do is going to highlight the findings. Can you tell me what you find? Find abnormal findings that require follow-up, that would require close assessment for you, all right? Can you give me those signs and symptoms that you think would need follow-up as a nurse? If this was your patient and you came into work and this was handed to you, this is your assignment, assigned patient, what are the things that you need to follow up after the patient told you these things? Anyone? In the actual NCLEX, highlighting text is easier, much easier than what I thought. And I'd be correcting myself live right now. When you do highlighting text, guys, you can just hover on the screen and it will show you things that you can click. You're not actually going to highlight it. You can just click the options. I do not have that ability right now here because this is a PowerPoint slide, obviously. But in my next Gen Master classes... Um, with my students, I show them how to do it, all right? So you can click the links. It's like a link where you, when you hover, it will show the yellow highlight over the words and you just click it, which is easier because what you're going to do at the start of the question, you're just going to browse through and find your options first. Once you found your option, click whatever the question is asking for, all right? So what are your answers here? So the answers are the following, loss of appetite, Abdominal pain, right? Abdominal pain started after being kicked because it might be a trauma. Your vital signs are definitely going to be highlighted too. So there's four items that we've highlighted here, all right? And again, in the actual NCLEX, you're not going to highlight it. You're going to hover and find the stuff that you can click, find the answers or items that you can click, all right? It's going to be light yellow shade when you hover you're gonna see lighter yellow when you click it's gonna be dark yellow all right i wish i could show you guys the screen that i'm using for my students in aspire rn but i couldn't do it here because this is a powerpoint slide jonathan is joining joining us from new jersey thank you guys for joining what other countries are here we've had nurses from um from um 
from the African continent, from the Asian continent, from the Northern America? Do we have, do we have from um, Southern America and uh, Europe and Australia? I think we have someone from Australia, right? Anyway, guys, let's go to question number two. By the way, for this question right here, it's plus minus, right? This is your first question. Anything that you've answered that's not my answer cost you a point or will cost you a point. All right, so plus minus. Now this type of scoring, guys, is also plus minus. This type of question is what I call the SATA on steroid, right? This is the multiple um, response matrix or matrix multiple response. If you remember my slide earlier, you can review this show in a little bit after this wraps up. This is going to be recorded and uploaded in Facebook. But guys, each column here is like a mini SATA, all right? So for example, here, bowel obstruction, you're going to find the assessment findings of the patient based on the case if it actually matches the findings for bowel obstruction, all right? And appendicitis and rupture explained. The way we score this in NCLEX is by column. So you're going to get your points here, your points on the second column, and your points on the third column, all right? And then we're going to total that. But then again, remember, it's plus minus scoring. Can you get deductions? Can you get deductions from incorrect answers? The answer is yes. Audic is here from California. Thank you for joining. Now, help me answer this, guys. In bowel obstructions, based on the appetite of the patient, can the patient have loss of appetite? Can the patient have a pain level of like that, 7 over 10? Can the patient have a bowel pattern of constipation for the last two weeks and abdominal pain? Can the patient have gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, fever, and constipation? All right, so what's the answers here? I'd say for me, I'll check all of them. You know what I mean? Because those are all sites of bowel obstruction, correct? So for bowel obstruction, all options are correct. We're going to check all of them. We're going to check all of them. We're going to check all of them, all right? So that's a total of four points. If you only answer two or three, then you get partial score. You got it? How about appendicitis, guys? Do they have loss of appetite, vomiting, fever, and constipation? Yes. Do they have pain level of possible 7 over 10, or that's severe pain already? Yes. Can you have a bowel pattern of constipation? Definitely. That's a check as well. Gastrointestinal symptoms of loss of appetite, vomiting, fever, constipation, that's yes as well. So for appendicitis, all of them are also correct. Correct? For ruptured spleen, that's also one of for differential diagnosis. Did you guys notice that in this type of question for multiple response matrix, again, matrix is a table, you're doing your differentials just like how the docs would do it, right? But we don't want to call it differential diagnosis because that's for medicine, in NCLEX, we call it prioritizing hypothesis, right? We call it hypothesis or analyzing hypothesis, right? Analyzing cues. For spleen, do we have vomiting, fever, constipation for the past, past two weeks or loss of appetite? Loss of appetite poss uh, possible. But you know what? You know what? Hold on, hold on. For ruptured spleen, it's not... A chronic problem. It's not going to last for days. It's a very acute problem. That I I lost it. Hello. All right. There you go. Am I still live? <laughs> I think my connection was lost. Am I still live, guys? Let me know if you guys can still see me. I think my internet is fluctuating. All right, thank you. I got a word from my moderators that I'm back live. Yes, I was gone for a few seconds because my internet fluctuated. All right, I've been having issues with my internet recently. Thank you so much. My moderators are here. All right, okay, guys, so what's your answers here? For ruptured spleen, I'm gonna answer pain. And that's the only symptom. There's no constipation there. There's no loss of appetite because, again, it is a an acute problem, ruptured spleen. It's not going to be something that's going to be there for, for
or days, right? Ruptured spleen is usually caused by trauma. And in this case, it's highly probable because the, the person was kicked on the stomach, right? So pain. So this is plus minus scoring, all right? How about this? You see this? Read the option, all right? It's the same situation, but says here, select three complications. This is, it looks like a SATA, but it's not a SATA, right? How many options are you guys trying to look for? For three options only, correct? And this is not a plus minus scoring. This is zero minus uh, zero over one, which means you only get points for all the correct answers, right? If you have incorrect answers, then you don't get a point. So considering that, what are your three differentials or I'm sorry, not differentials, your complications that can happen? Anyone? What are your complications for this certain case that looks like an abdominal pain that could be bowel obstruction or appendicitis? What is it? Can you have anemia? Can you have peritonitis? Can you have septic shock? Can you have hypovolemia? Can you have dysrhythmia? Can you have cardiac arrest? Peritonitis for sure, right? Because th that's abdominal issue, appendicitis, bowel obstruction, and spleen can all develop that. So two, yes, septic shock. I think the patient's about to start having septic shock because the temperature is already 103.4, pulse is 92, R22. Those are what I call Sears symptoms. Are you guys familiar with Sears? Sy systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Those are early signs of shock. That's an impending shock, all right? Septic shock. If you don't control that, within a few hours, the patient moves into sepsis and then septic shock. Septic shock is when the blood pressure starts going down already, all right? So that's peritonitis, septic shock. And what's the last one? Uh, the last option is actually number four, all right? Hypovolemia because of sepsis, all right? Or ex example, it's a ruptured spleen. It could lead to heavy bleeding. That could lead to hypovolemia as well. Um, this rhythm and cardiac arrest are going to be very far or down the line into your pathophysiology. That is, you know, if there's already you have issues like hypoxia or no blood flow, but we only choose three. Remember, you can only choose three. So the answers are two, three, and four. You got it, guys? Guys, <laughs> we're not doing a SATA right now, okay? We are only doing what we call select N, which is the much easier version or toned down version of SATA which is select three only, okay? So two, three, and four. And that's zero over one scoring, meaning if you get three points, all three correct, then you get three. If you only got, for example, two and three correctly, then you get two points, all right? Do you guys think you like partial scoring? Yes or no? Do you like partial scoring now? Yes? I think I like partial scoring because I'd rather get two points or one point over three, one point over three, Two points over three, three over three, then zero point. You got me? Because that will still add up to your scores and help you with your NCLEX, right? Now, considering the same situation, guys, this type of question is called matrix multiple choice. The other one is called matrix multiple response. The other one previously. This one is multiple choice, which means you can only choose one per row, one per row. One per row. Do you think we need a clear liquid diet for this abdominal painter? Not indicated. Should be NPO. Do we need the soap suds enema? Not indicated. Because if it's apior bowel obstruction, you're just going to cause peritonitis, right? You're going to rupture your intestines and all that. Heating pad to the abdomen. Not indicated. It might cause spasms too. Abdominal girth measurement. Indicated because we want to make sure there's no bleeding or... Fluids accumulating there in the tummy. How about abdominal CT scan indicated because we need to find out what's the cause of the abdominal pain. It could be many things. In this case, it's only focusing on bowel obstruction versus appendicitis versus ruptured spleen. So the first three not indicated, the last two indicated. Who got this question correctly? Who got this correctly? And Jonathan agrees with me. Partial scoring is much, much better. I agree with that, all right? And um, don't be scared with next-gen NCLEX. That's why we're doing shows like this, and Aspire RN is also here to help to make sure that you guys pass the NCLEX. Um, thank you for everybody who's watching. I appreciate you guys. 
And guys, this type of question is called, and I'm going to remove my camera so we guys can see the whole situation. This type of question is called close, all right? So you see the drop boxes on the side. But let's read the question. What happened here? At 11.30, the doctor was informed client status awaiting orders. At 12.30, CAT scan was done. At 12.45, 20-gauge IV was inserted to the left hand. You still with me, guys? There are signs of infiltration. Sodium chloride infusing at 75 ml per hour. All right. At 2 o'clock p.m., temperature is up, still up. Pulse is now high, RR20. Blood pressure starts trending down. At 14.15, the primary health care provider was notified about client status. Orders received for additional CAT scan and patient was transported to radiology. Guys, did you see a new tab there? It's called Diagnostic Results, right? Let's click that and see what happens. What did we find here? There is an acute appendix with appendicolit. There's a stone, right? There's a blockage. And now at 2.45 p.m., the appendix has ruptured, correct? So that's the case. It's all about appendicitis. Now let's go to your situation right here or the question. The first box says the nurse should insert what, all right? Can you guys choose for me? What would you insert if you now know that the patient has appendicitis? And we're going to wrap up very soon. I'm over time. I'm sorry. What are you guys going to choose if the patient has appendicitis? Do you want rectal tube? Do you want NG tube or indwelling Foley? Choose one for me, please. And this is so easy because you only choose one. You only get to choose one. You cannot choose many because it's a drop box. NGT, very good. Because we're going to put the patient in NPO. We're also going to try to decompress the GI tract in preparation for surgery. Uh, I'm sorry. How about the second option? It would be a priority for the nurse to request for what? Considering there's already ruptured appendix, what's your priority? Analgesia, pain medicine, antipyretic for fever, or anti-infective. All of these are correct. But remember, you choose one. You choose one. Um, at this point, what you want to do is to stop the sepsis by giving anti-infective. Agreed? Agreed? Welcome, everybody, to those who just joined. I'm about to wrap up. This case study, yes, anti-infective. And this is called drop down close, guys, because all you got to do is click the button and you see options. I think this is so easy. It's just completing sentences, but you're not typing the words. You're choosing them, right? Right? Do you guys think this is easy? The nurse should prepare the client for surgery within, within, within six hours. Actually, the... The earlier, the better, because it's already a ruptured appendix. But I mean, the faster that we can do it based on the case is six hours. So the answer is six hours, right? So do you guys like next gen? I, I personally like next gen NCLEX, right? A lot of people got scared at the beginning. So everybody tried to rush taking January, February, March, right? The exam, they tried to rush before next gen NCLEX. To be honest with you, a lot of people made that mistake. And some of the people that I've talked to, um, have failed the NCLEX because of that, because they rushed so that they won't do the next-gen NCLEX. Guys, listen to me. In the next-gen NCLEX, only a few things change. How the question is delivered and how it's scored and a couple more things, little things, right? But listen to me. The concepts didn't change. Myocardial infarction is still MI the same way between old and next-gen NCLEX, right? Appendicitis is the same. Same pathophysiology, same management, nothing changed. The NCLEX only changed the way it scores you and evaluates your learning by diff um, using different types of questions. But remember this, if you have solid concepts in your mind and you can generate information from what you've learned from those, guys, even if they change the types of question constantly, you're still going to get it correctly. You know why? Because concept mastery is king. It's very important. So it doesn't matter how many times they change the NCLEX format, the concepts do not change, only except with certain updates for evidence-based medicine. But you know what I'm saying? So it shouldn't scare you because what you need to do in NCLEX anyway, even if it's the old generation NCLEX, I keep saying this to my students, you have to master your concepts because you're going to get SATA questions, right? And now it's just a different way of asking questions. 
right? But it's still gonna be the same concept. So don't be scared with next gen and clicks, all right? Guys, we have more things that came up with your nurse's notes. It's becoming long, all right? And um, 14 o'clock, 14, 15, all right, let's go to 18 o'clock. Client transported to the OR for Appy. 2030, the patients, patients now it's med search unit. And 2230, whew, this is plenty, huh? Client is performing coughing and deep breathing exercises every hour while awake with incentive spirometer. Post up leg, leg exercises every hour while awake. NG tube is now removed, drinking clear liquids now. Abdomen is board like with diminished bowel sounds in all quadrants, and there's now rebound tenderness present. Are those normal findings? The board like abdomen and decreased re, um, decreased bowel sounds in all quadrants and reports um, tenderness or rebound tenderness. Those are signs of peritonitis, right? So select all that apply. Which of the following? The question is about. Which of the following would indicate that the client is progressing as expected? Guys, this is select all that apply, right? So the scoring system we're going to use is plus minus. Plus minus meaning you're going to get deductions for incorrect answers. Correct? Correct? All right. So what's your answers here? That the patient is now progressing as expected. What are we looking for here? Positive or negative findings? Because this situation is mixed. There's positive and negative findings. What are we looking for? Positive findings, because we're looking for signs of progress, not signs of complication. So the patient's now doing clear liquid, that's a positive finding. What else? Remember, this is plus minus. If you check something that's incorrectly, that's um, an incorrect item, you get deduction. Incentive spirometry use, number four. Yes, what else? Perform leg exercises, number six, correct? Very good, Ralph got it correctly. Mark got it correctly. Rose got it correctly. Marjone got it correctly. Y'all got three points. If anyone here has answered more than that and had clicked two or three or five, you get deductions. But you get my point, right? I know I'm going through the case super quickly, but I'm just highlighting how it is scored. So you guys are aware, right? So the technique that I tell my students, do not click something that you're not 100% sure of. If you're doubting your option, for example, number three, I'm not sure. Wait, well, rebound tenderness is super easy. You're not going to click that, of course, right? If you click that, guys, you need a lot of um, preparation, okay? Because your foundation is not good. But supposing this is a very tricky question, all right? I realize that my camera is not there. Supposing this is a very tricky question and you're not sure if you're going to click two or three, all right? Guys, if you're not sure, just don't click it because you're gonna get partial score anyway for the correct answers, correct? And the worst that can happen is if you click it and it's an incorrect item, you get deduction. So trust your gut, trust your instinct, do not click it if you're not sure, right? Very important at that, right? That's one of the techniques that I tell students. And I think that's the last, <laughs> that's my last um, thing for today. Um, that's just a preview of what I do for my engine master classes. In fact, after this show, I still have another class with my students, NGN master classes. I do that every weekend for my students. And we've had great success. Please follow Aspire RN. We're also going to share Dr. Nurse Paul. We've got so many students who passed the next gen NCLEX. We didn't have anyone fail. All of our students who took the April exam passed the NCLEX. We are so happy about the 100% pass rate for a April for next gen NCLEX. And I'm so proud with my students. All right. Um, they worked hard for it. They were very anxious about next gen NCLEX, but they were very confident with their performance after the NCLEX wrapped up, after their exam wrapped up because of their preparation. Right. I always tell my students, you're not expected to know everything. All right you will never ever feel that you're adequately prepared for any major exam. I took my NCLEX, I took my Philippine board, I took my nurse practitioner board. In all of those exams, there's doubts, right? And people are like, you're so smart, like you know everything, you know, like um, you're gonna pass your nurse practitioner board so easily, but I could not rely on what pe other people tell me, right? I know for a fact that there's so many things that I didn't know that I still don't know, right? But the exam is only geared to check your ability as an entry-level 
nurse. It does not test you as an expert nurse. All right. It's not going to make you do a pathophysiology. It's just going to test you how well you know your concepts so you can safety practice. So don't get scared. You're not supposed to know everything, but you still have to prepare. All right. And clicks, after all, it's not an easy exam. If it was easy, I don't need to put up a Spire RN to help you guys. All right. So if that's something you're interested with, personalized approach, longest review program, real value for money. Somebody says your program is too expensive, but if you look at the content of the program, you might change your mind because I have many live classes. I do NG and master classes. And the, the way that I built the program, I don't earn a lot of money from that. What's important for me is my track record and the quality of education. And honestly, I just do this because I love teaching. I can earn my money from going back to the bedside as a nurse, right? And that's what I love doing. That's why I took my DNP because I wanted to be a clinical expert as a nurse. And I'm also a nurse practitioner. But my passion is teaching. My passion is helping people pass the NCLEX because I know there's a need for it. There, there is only 43% pass rate for international educated nurses. I want to improve that rate. I want to be one of those people that will affect the change to make sure that our IENs are geared and prepared to take the NCLEX. And there's a whole lot of different reasons why um, IENs fail the NCLEX. And one of the major things that is causing that is what we call educational gaps because you know NCLEX is geared for american nurses and if you're educated somewhere else and have had students from 40 countries with 40 different educational background and there's one thing in common that's that everybody has their education is different than us you got it that's why when i flash a question a lot of people would answer this way when in the States, when in the U.S., our practice would say this way because we're evidence-based. The nurse would say from other country would say, oh, let me call the physician for orders. But I would say, here's the answer because it's evidence-based medicine. It's nurse-driven protocol, which means you can act autonomously, independently to do this before you call your doctor. You got it? So that's what we're doing in Aspire RN. We're trying to bridge that gap. The curriculum that I did when I teach I bridge that gap from your education, from your nursing background, for which country you're from, to what you need to know to take the NCLEX. And that's why we have very good success rate, right? It's very, very transformational in the sense that we inspire you to learn, not discourage you because you don't know um, a few things, all right? So that's what we do. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope you learned a lot today. But we're going to show the poster again for my moderators. Let's show the virtual job fair. I'm so excited for this. This is going to be this Wednesday, guys. And uh, let's enlarge the screen, my friends. Um, thank you to my moderators for flashing this screen today and helping me out with the show. I have a team of people in the background helping me with this show. It's Kim and Lovely and Kay. Thank you guys for helping me today. My moderators are very flexible, guys. I could not run the Dr. Nurse Paul show by myself. It's the Aspire RN team that's helping me um, get this show together. I'm just the host, all right? I'm just the face of it. But there's so many people that represent Dr. Nurse Paul and Aspire R, and it's not just me. So we, we thank them for their um, being flexible. All right, virtual job fair, guys. May 3, May 10, May 17, May 24, and May 31, we're going to be bringing in all these employers, and they're going to tell us their available jobs. The states where they deploy to, their sponsorships and benefits of joining them. So please join me. This is every Wednesday, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. You have to pre-register. And the QR code is now on your screen. And the link we can post here in the comments. Or also visit Dr. Nurse Paul's um, Facebook. I don't have a web page yet if anyone wants to create my web page. But Facebook page. Um, and we have the links in there as well. If you cannot scan the QR code. All right. Are you guys going to join this? If you guys already have employers, can you please tell your friends to join? This is very beneficial for everybody. And we're going to give out free NCLEX reviews, UWorld subscriptions, IELTS review programs, and vouchers and codes. There's so many winners. Every show, I'm going to give out to the nursing community. My goal this month is to connect nurses with recruiters, but also to give out free NCLEX IELTS review program to those who need it, all right? So we're going to give out a lot of um, raffles and giveaways this month of May because 
May is all about you guys. May is all about nurses. All right. And I thank you guys for your service. I've been a nurse myself. I've been, I've worked in the bedside of myself and it's such a noble job. It's not easy, but we're doing it for, because we love what we're doing. All right. Without nurses, healthcare system will crumble. That's still my point of view there. All right. So thank you guys for doing what you're doing for your patients, for your community, for your family. All right. And that's only the Wednesday shows. Every Saturday, we still have shows. So let's flash that. There we go. The Dr. Nurse Paul show is going to be every Saturday still. So four Saturdays of May. May 6th is the official kickoff of the Nurses Month. And with this, I'm going to be collaborating with my Filipino nurse influencers and vloggers. I'm so fortunate to be invited as a resource speaker to talk about safe and better employment around the world. It's a global um, discussion. I'm going to be um, hosting the show with my peers in Australia, in New Zealand, in Germany, in America, in Canada. And these are popular Filipino nurse influencers. Um, I'm so fortunate to be invited. I'm happy to serve my community to give back to um, my country, to the Filipino people. But also, I'm going to be still doing my shows on May 13. 20 and 27. May 13 is something I'm very excited about because you know how, I'm a, how I am a proponent of financial independence. I'm going to be inviting one of my friends who's doing um, FIRE. FIRE is Financial Independence Retire Early, all right? So if you guys are not yet here in the States, I think this would be a beneficial idea for you. That way, when you get here, you already have your financial plan, all right? So we're just not here to work every day, right? We're here to also set our future so we don't have to work all our lives, correct? So that's very important for me. I'm happy to share that. I'm actually going to do it live with the person. I'm going to fly down to their city and do it live side by side with them. That's what I'm going to do. May 20 is another Nurses Month special. It's a surprise. May 27, we're going to talk about the American Dream stories, um, stories of nurses with success stories from the clinical area, leadership um, area, and academic area. So all areas of nursing. We're going to talk about their migration um, story, how they came to the United States, and what they've done to get where they're at. Very, very inspirational. And every week of the Dr. Nurse Paul Show, there's also going to be winners of NCLEX Review Program. All right. So who's interested to join? This is going to be every Saturday. 8 a.m. So again, two shows, two shows for May. Wednesdays are going to be virtual job fairs. Saturdays are going to be Dr. Nurse Paul show talking about everything about nursing. We're going to put off Secrets of Next Generation NFLEX for a bit because I want the month of May to be all about nurses in my show. All right. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys for joining me today. We've gone over time by about 10 minutes. I woke up a little late too, so we had to start a little late. Um, it's so cold and so uh, gloomy today, so it's really making me sleepy. But thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you for um, supporting Dr. Nurse Paul. If you guys have questions, you can send me a message at Dr. Nurse Paul or Aspire R in Facebook page. Or you can also message us in Instagram or TikTok. I'm also online there. All right. Please give me a follow in Instagram and TikTok. Show some love. All right. And we have so much surprises um, uh, ready for you this month of May for the Nurses Month. Again, advanced. Happy International Nurses Month to everybody. Thank you, guys. I'll see you this Wednesday for our first virtual job fair all right scan to register the qr code is going to be flashed on the screen and we have the posters uploaded in our page thank you guys i appreciate you i'll see you guys soon bye you have just watched the dr nurse paul show watch us live every saturday 8 a.m central u.s time for more info about our future events follow us on our social media channels you can find us at dr nurse paul on facebook Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. See you next week.